round three. Tell me about it later. My feeling on, on, uh, on staff side. Staff yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I'd encourage it. I mean, I, we had a very large staff the first two seasons that we were at Michigan, and um, and and it can be too much. It can be uh, you know, just too many people with too much access. And um, you know what we've what we've done is as people have moved on to other jobs, really good jobs, head coaching jobs or, or director, player personnel jobs. Uh, or assistant coaching jobs, uh, graduate assistants, uh, analysts to, to actual you know, full-time jobs. You know, we've we've taken the approach of of not hiring every job when somebody leaves, and and taking the approach of consolidating jobs. You know, where people are doing multiple jobs, um, and I'm excited about that. It, um, you know, I, I feel like. Uh, you know, it can be better managed. It can be better, better organized, and you know, that's the direction we're going. Does anybody need 190? <clears throat> no. But I mean, so Jim, you have gotten leaner. Yeah, we have. Like yeah. quite a bit leaner. Or probably like about, probably, I would think by, you know, um, probably about nine, yeah. nine folks, and um, yeah, I mean, those are the assistant coaches. You know, yeah. We've we were at nine. Yeah, we're right. nine, and, and we replaced both of those. But there's been other jobs, uh, you know, where where somebody's moved on, where they've moved on to, you know, uh, either head high school job, head college job, uh, you know, full time assistant at a college job. Um, other moved on to other player personnel uh, jobs, etc. There's there's uh, there's interns that have become uh, full time assistants, etc. 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 And uh, we have probably to about nine to ten of those positions. You know, we've consolidated job rather than hire yeah. same same when somebody has left. Just Maybe in that case, have to replace some of them. Sometimes schools are just increasing staffs because budgets and revenues are going up, and it's like, well, you know, we got the money, let's spend it. Only need to keep it. So schools seem to be just adding positions because they have the money. No, that, that's part of it. I think the, the other part is, um, I mean, and it partly was the, was the case um, at our place, and I noticed um, you know, when we first got there, there was a large staff, and you don't like, you don't like, uh, you like people, you know, and uh, you want to see them have an opportunity, and you want to uh, not fire people, and, uh, you know, you care about them and as, as people and their, and their professional careers and their families. And, Etc. So, uh, you know that's part of it. And then you know other good people, and you, you know you, and people want to volunteer, but that's not right either. You know, to you know, it becomes, um, you know, like a sweatshop to me. If you if people are and people will do it. People will just volunteer to uh, to uh, you know be in the program. And you wanna you wanna you wanna encourage people and, and help them in their careers. But what it does lead to, it does lead to too many people. With too much access, and and uh, and that's the direction we're going. We're going with uh, with consolidating positions, and and um, it's it's our path. I think it was uh, A plus on all levels, um, and. You know, watching, watching our guys, hearing their stories, hearing what was what really resonated with them on the trip, made the trip so much better. Uh, definitely encouraged, as I said before, going to going on trips with with a big group. It's it's phenomenal, and uh, you know some of the some of the things that that happened. You know, were they were a team? So you know, every everything's an opportunity to to bond together as a as a team and as a ball team. But there were things. It happened just El Natural when we were together for a whole week in a in a different country that uh, were phenomenal. Uh, so many more opportunities to ride next to a guy on a bus or or uh, uh, sit at a table and have a meal when you're together for a week straight like that. So our team took full advantage of it, 
they pushed each other from place to place to place, and and uh, you know Angelique and and Mark and Nick and people that were there can tell you. I mean that's that's what it was like. I mean we didn't take a knee. We were we were go 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 the entire time. So yeah, just I wholeheartedly recommend it, and um, you know happy if anybody to you know, lend lend support if anybody else you know is thinking of the idea of taking their team. Uh, on a trip like this, and I've even had some of our competitors have come up to me and said, uh, "You know, that, that trip was phenomenal. You know, it was it was awesome." And he goes, "We've been we've been trying to, as a staff to poke holes in it, and we can't. There's nothing we can poke holes in. We just try to change the conversation, change the subject real fast." And I said, "Well, instead of doing that, do it. You know, take take your team on a on a educational trip, and uh, you'll it's phenomenal for all involved." Have you thought about? What would be the next step for that? I mean, would you try and do a different one or anything that you're, you're thinking of beyond that for next year? Yeah, next year we're uh, we're planning a trip right now to go to uh, Paris and Normandy next spring. Did you ever go to London? Or was that doing that yeah, again? yeah, Nick. It was. Um, there's so much to do in Paris, and as you talk to some of the experts and travel planners, uh, you want to you want to spend time in in Paris. You want to go to. Monet's Gardens. You want to go to uh, Versailles. You want to go to to Normandy, and that's a it needs it needs a, a week. I mean, I've been to Paris and didn't get close to everything uh, done in one week. So I think that's that'll probably be the the way we'll we'll lean as we're starting to prepare for this trip and, and plan it. Yeah. Coach, coach, you don't talk. Like to wear, I know you don't like to wear comfortable. Wear. How That's one of them. Are you now in, the, in year three, as far as the, the control, how, how comfortable are the players now? As far as okay, this is your program. It's no, you're no longer the new coach. This is your program. Uh, I mean, chomping at the bit. Uh, you know, just you know, like like a bull pawing at the ground, ready to go. Uh, that's that's where we're at right now. Um, excited as heck to coach and. You know, just as I look at our team, it's it's made up of the the fifth year seniors, the seniors, the the juniors, the sophomores, the freshmen. I'm, and e each class, you know, it's uh, you know excited for them all. So many good young, talented players that that makes me very happy. Young and untalented is not a very uh, good formula. So I know we got to coach them up. I know we really got to uh, do a great job of coaching. You know, all of our players, especially the, the young ones that we'll be training, uh, you know, the true juniors, the ones that uh, it was a small class. There was only about 12 in that class that, that recruited in the uh, 2015 uh, signing class. But to see them, uh, they're having the opportunity to just show how good they can be. You know, now is their time to do that. Uh, same with the seniors and the fifth year seniors. Uh, the ones that were in a lot of those ball games that we played last year, uh, how truly good can they be? And just that idea of having at it, and no better time than in training camp to, to forge the ball club. And yeah, it comes with ifs and conditions, and we got to, you know, if this, you know, we'll be good. If we don't do that, then we won't. Uh, you know, I know this though, getting ourselves to be better, you know, give more of ourselves, more. More time, more, more of our heart, more of our talent, and pour that in as coaches. Uh, it's gonna, it's gonna take that for us to be better this year. And players, the same thing. More effort, uh, more putting their heart and soul into it, uh, so that our ball, our ball team can be the best it can possibly be. And excited, excited, excited about that. Oh, um, I don't know if I'm the best to answer that question because um, I don't know for sure. Communication's been good. I mean, that enhanced communication. I mean, I feel like I feel like I know more things that are going on. You know, uh, get a lot of humor from it. Uh, <laughs> you know. What was the genesis of the YouTube account? I think his question was first. Oh, sorry. <laughs>
Uh, I guess the thing that inspires me is, uh, you know, I, I see other people doing it, and I, I really appreciate it. Uh, you know, just people, you know, that uh, you know, talk about things, share things, you know, their likes and, you know, uh, recommendations about uh, different things, and I appreciate that. So, uh, kind of learn more. I, I seem to learn more because through social media, and I know I laugh a little bit more during the day. Uh, some of the things that people put on there, some of the videos that uh, they put on there, especially with the video and the sound. I mean, even it was even you know, that's that's uh, even more more things uh, to notice. I mean, I, I'm, because I have one of those accounts, I'm like, hey, Sarah, look at this. Can you believe this? <laughs> look at this. You know, uh, there's some incredible things on there. So I'm not saying I'm a, I haven't had anything incredible yet, but you know. What, in, what inspired you to start the YouTube account? Uh, just, just what I just, yeah, just, just, just what I just said, you know. Just, uh, I think other people, just, you know, uh, uh, people in general that, uh, you know, that post the videos and and uh, and and the the sound on there. I think there's there's so many positive ones that are out of there uh, that I want to be part of that. I want to be part of the uh, you know, positivity. Force for good. Well, really excited about it because uh, I just historically, you know, have learned that the biggest jump you can make as a player in college, the biggest jump single year is going from that freshman year to the sophomore year. Those, those 12 months that you have to train yourself and, and uh, but also now everything they do from this moment on, this rest of this entire year, they've already done before. They're doing it for a second time. They have experience doing that and and uh, you know, I have a study to show you, but uh, experience has taught me that that's when you can make your biggest improvement in one year as a football player. So that's exciting. That was a big class. That was uh, a talented class, and and um, you know, got a got to pour a lot pour a lot into coaching into those youngsters because I mean they're right for it. I mean they're uh, they're really good for it. They're they're all ears. They're listening. They want to be good, and and uh, so. Yeah, that's uh, part of the excitement. As I, as I said, though, in each class, I can look and say, wow, there's some really, really good things about each class. The common denominator is we got to coach them all. <laughs> we gotta, they all have an opportunity to, to show how good they can be and, and find out how good of a player can they be. And, and it all happens on the football field in the most honest manner possible. I mean, the truth must be told when you step out on the football field. You can no longer bull crap uh, or email somebody. Uh, you've got to go out there and actually prove it, uh, what your talent is, what your effort is, and how well you've trained yourself up to that point. You haven't Jim. shied away from playing guys on both sides of the ball, offense, defense. Any candidates for something like that this year? Don't know. Too, maybe a little too early to tell that. I mean, uh, you know, we really want to, you know, first and foremost, Identify the 11 on defense. Identify the 11 best on offense, and and then the 11 best in each of the kicking phases, especially the the, the four majors uh, kicking phases, and also the the field goal extra point and the field goal block unit. Uh, you know, that uh, that best 11, and then then identify the backups and, and who they are going to be, and and then uh, that's job one, the priority above you know, uh, tinkering with who can play both ways at this point. Jim, Wilton, sure. isn't, Wilton wasn't one of the three uh, players you have here representing you guys here today. Why? And then what is it about the three that you guys did bring here? You know, why, why did you want them here representing you guys? I like big guys. I like bringing the big guys uh, for, some, for some reason. I think uh, well, they, the... The guys in the trenches, for sure. I mean, I always that Mohurst and uh, Mason Cole were two easy ones. That was that was easy. Uh, 
you know, those guys, those guys hit every play. They uh, they do the dirty work, and I've always, I always felt the, you know, the personality of the team, uh, you know, the, is is uh, the character of the team is is with those big guys in, in the lines, and I want I want them to uh, represent us first and foremost, and also Mike McCray, uh, you know, because um, I watched him two years ago when he was a, a good listener. You know, he really listened to Don Brown, he uh, and, and 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 DJ and his coaches, uh, and and the older guys that were in front of him, uh, and he trained himself. And now I see him as being a leader. I see guys going to him and and uh, em- trying to emulate what what he's doing. So uh, yeah, w- w- there's other guys I would like to bring. They, they capped it at three, and uh, you know, simple answer. I know I got a little long there. I like to bring the big guys. With the with Brandon, I know you, we know the best quarterback's going to be the quarterback. Right? Yeah. But with Brandon, is there any hesitancy or apprehension? He's young. He's never played. Yeah. Is that scary at all, or make you nervous, or is it his talent just so much that you got to see what he can, if he can do it right now? Yeah, I mean, uh, fair, open, honest competition, healthy uh, in all ways. Um, you know, and throw the balls out there and let the let the best one. Prevail, and you like to see it to where it's obvious to everybody you know, that uh, you know somebody really emerges and uh, you know, sep- gets separation, and, and that uh, usually takes about 10 to 15 practices. But, uh, you know, the good news is that that uh, you know really Wilton and then the other two, Brandon and John, really raised up to that level. So it's you know it's been a you know that kind of a that kind of a situation where it's, in my mind, it's on the rise from what I've seen. Have uh, you reflected it at all? I remember your, the first year you were here, it was Jake, and then I remember you told us like in week two or three, it's Jake's the best quarterback on this team, and it's not really as close as it needs to be. Now it looks like you've got three options. Have you reflected on the no, I mean, journey at all? No, it's exactly what I said was uh, I went into that first training camp, and uh, it was Jake and, and Shane and... And Wilton really were the three that were competing for that starting job. And and after three weeks, I made the comment, it's Jake Rudox's a starter, and it's not even close. Yeah. And it wasn't. He had separated himself clearly. Um, then in last year's competition, um, it was Wilton and John O'Corn and Shane, and and they were all playing good. They were really, they were all playing really, really good throughout training camp. And, and that was also an encouraging thing too. Uh, you know, there wasn't huge separation last year's training camp, but the eye said this is good because they're they're all really playing well. And then uh, you know, Wilton got out there and from the you know, the first game on, he he performed well in the ball games. And and uh, so what we were seeing in that training camp last year was was right. They were they were all playing good, and Wilton was playing just a little bit better, and that's that's why he. He got the nod last year, and uh, that experience, he's been through that. So, I mean, that bodes well for him. He's in a good spot, you know, because he's, he's been through one of those three-man competitions and prevailed already. Coach he won one and lost one. <laughs> so, Coach, he knows how both feel. Yeah. Coach, uh, talk to me about the influence, if any, that Pep Hamilton, a short time at Michigan, has had on the quarterbacks. Oh, I'd love to talk to you about the influence Pep has had. It's been, uh, it's been fantastic. Uh, He's just really one of the best coaches out there around, one of the best coaches in all of football, pro or college, in the country. And uh, our players see it and uh, are benefiting greatly. He's, uh, he's a jackhammer. He, is, he is, has such a good ability to stay on point, stay on detail, um, never loses energy or, or focus in, uh, in a way that it's, he teaches too. Uh, it's not confusing. It's not not fast. It's you know it's right. And uh, so I could I could talk to you all day. I love I love him. Love Pep. Uh, tremendous father too. I mean, uh, he is one of the. He should write a book. He really did. Should write a book or get on YouTube and uh, <laughs> take videos of how to play. Because uh, I mean it's 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 so good. I mean he coaches the players on our team just like uh, you know he. He, he, he talks to his own kids, you know, doesn't treat them any, doesn't treat the, our own players any different than his own kids. I mean, it's, 
it's uh, you know high high expectations. Uh, you know, teaches them, gives them the tools, and uh, and pushes them, push them, pushes them along to be as good as they can be. And uh, he never cheats them. You know, he never allows them. He never does for them what what they can do for themselves. And he always holds them to to uh, give their best effort. Uh, yeah, it's good. Could go on and on and on, really. I mean, he's just, he's just one of the really fantastic football coaches in all of football. Jim, this morning you were talking about the most losses that your team had, how everybody had to be more. Did you go through the season to look back at yourself as a head coach and think there were certain things that maybe you could have done better as a head coach? Do you still analyze like that through the season? Maybe yeah, definitely. Those, yeah. Like, all the time. Things? All the time. Mistakes made and. Uh, you know, uh, how to uh, not let them happen again. I said mistakes. Yeah, I reflect back often on mistakes made and, and making darn sure they don't happen again. Do you care to identify what you thought that you were trying to correct? Or? Yeah, you probably have. I mean, uh, yeah, the, the, the big ones, uh, you know, uh, putting, our, putting our players in the best possible position to to have success and you know, the times that we did and didn't do that. And, you know, that oh, and I always look at myself first and, and uh, try to correct them. You had a couple of big recruiting classes. How do you balance those guys out maybe over there in three years versus playing right away, redshirting, or spreading them out uh, in terms of when they play? I, don't, I really don't think about... Uh, you know, any kind of spreading it out or anything. I just, um, you know, they have, they all, I treat them all the same. They all have the license and the ability to, to play and, and be good. And, uh, I don't want to let them have that. And, um, you know, no tricks, no games, no politics, uh, just pure, healthy, honest, fair competition. And, you know, as we go through them, we tell them the truth. You know, uh, you know, this is where you stand. This is what you're doing good. This is what you need to do better. And, uh, yeah, there will be cases where, you know, some keep playing and uh, you know, some, uh, you're talking about redshirting, some yeah. will have to redshirt. Yeah, just be, uh, you know, just give them that, uh, give them that honest, truthful uh, evaluation and coaching and training. And that's, but for all the same, you know, all, pouring all our energy into them and uh, into coaching. So it's not about it. It's good. We're young. You know, we're too young to slow down and. You know, that's what we want to do. That's what we like doing. So that's what we're going to continue to do. So it's not about a balancing act, like at the back end of their no, career. No, we need absolutely to not. Not a balancing act whatsoever. How different is Smokehurst as a player now from when you arrived? Uh, you know, I, I he's stronger. He's faster. Got the evidence for that. Uh, he's more serious. Uh, and he's getting. Getting more opportunity, and you kind of look back and you go, "Gosh, you know, Mo's always every time he's been in there, he's done well." You know, even from uh, even from, from, from some of the first years, and uh, you know, makes plays so darn quick, and so tough to block, and uh, you know, he's just getting tougher to block. He's getting he's getting quicker, and uh, he's in there more. He's not rotating as much. And, uh, you know, that's going to be exciting to see more of him out there. Same with Rashawn. More Rashawn out there. More Brian Monet and, uh, and more Chase Winovich. You know, I'm excited to see that, and then excited to see you know what what guys are going to become the backups. You know, Lawrence Marshall can he can he break through and and be a factor, and, and then what young guys, Aubrey Solomon and James Hudson and Philip Paella and, and Deron Irving Bay. I mean, some of the backups are going to come from that uh, that those first year guys, and and Carl Myers. I mean, what a tremendous story there. I mean. One of our, uh, one of our truly probably our best, our best player that they walked out on defense, <clears throat> played as a freshman, and then Nate Shanley, you know, so far our best player that's walked out on on offense, and uh, every guy, every you know, story, uh, you know, trying to, and everybody trying to be as good as they can, and trying to uh, get a starting role or trying to. Get a backup role, or trying to dress for the game, or trying to you know, get on special teams. It's, you know, each guy 
of the story. Is there one player in particular you're intrigued about seeing step up this year that caught your eye in the spring or in Rome that intrigues you that, that you think could be a player that people don't know about yet? Yes, I do. Um, and I, 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 I hate I hate going down that road and right. then you go, who's the one player? I mean, there's so many right now. There's so many that have the license and the opportunity to do that. Uh, I mean, think about it, especially on our team. There's, there's a lot of positions that you know, with, a, with a starter, that grease board's been wiped completely clean. And uh, so there's there's so many that have the, the opportunity to do that uh, and watch it, excited to watch it go down. Uh, and participate in it, you know, get to actually coach them and or train them uh, to be the best they can. You know, I asked you about the two and eight. So you returning starters? What's that? Have you ever had a situation like this with so few returning starters? Probably can't. Probably not. Probably, probably can't. I can't think of it that way. But uh, um, I don't think I have. No. Does it make it more mysterious or exciting to kind of like mold it more play here? You have so much influence on these guys. Yeah, it does. It is. It is more exciting. It feels that way. It feels uh, yeah. knowing guys have uh, the opportunity in front of them and, and see them, see them be hungry, you know, and, and excited about that opportunity is uh, yeah, it's it's that's fun to coach. And they're talented too, you know. It's not I don't deviate from that. I mean, young and untalented, bad. Young and talented. Good. That's good. That's a good thing. Jim, you said earlier today that in hindsight, uh, in retrospect, you're glad that what happened at the end of the year, particularly Ohio State game, happened to get your motivation. How long did it take you to get over that game? And did you, how many times did you watch that for that point? Uh, you know, I just just felt that way that um, that uh, that there was. It was going to take it. It was going to take putting more into it. It's going to take more as coaches. Uh, you know, we got to pour more of this, our heart in this. Players have to do it to, too. You know, they got to give more effort. They're going to have to. They're going to have to pour more of their heart and soul into this, and uh, you know, that this. And they've been through this. You know, hey, you, you want to high five in the locker room after the game, or, or you want to feel uh, like you feel when you lose the ball game, and that's, you know. That uh, use that as mo motivation. Let's, let's strap on the iron jock and and, uh, and and work like crazy and, and get the job done. Build build a ball team like that. Jim, you mentioned uh, freshman and sophomore play being you know critical. Can you describe your freshman and sophomore play? Do we say what? Say it again, Adam. You said the freshman and sophomore loop is critical, probably the biggest. Can you describe your freshman and sophomore loop and your experience? Can you talk about your experience with the guys. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, it's yeah. I mean, I, I at case in point, I got better, much better. The single, you know, most improvement I made was you know, from that that first year to the to the second. Well, how, much, how much do you use your personal experience to, to explain it to them rather than just saying this is important? From time to time, I don't know exactly how much. How much? Jim, you have so much momentum right now. You have a lot of momentum right now as a program through your first two seasons. Obviously, significant personnel losses you set unprecedented in, in your career. How concerned are you that with all the new faces and all the variables and things that go wrong, that you may lose some of this momentum this year? I mean, most other programs with 17 starters gone, people would think they'd step back, and there's very little expectation of that. For you. Well, I mean, I'll give you another personal example. You know, when the starting quarterback at Michigan graduated, Steve Smith graduated, I mean, ah, aha, you know. This is this is my opportunity. You know, this is uh, this is a chance. You know, and and uh, I gotta gotta take advantage of it. And I you know, I see that for a lot of our guys. Uh, you know, many of them have played and uh, and started. You know, and some have been you know, that uh, you know waiting for this opportunity for this chance. And and I'm excited about that. I'm excited about coaching guys that are really hungry. And cause I remember I've. Remember that feeling. Remember that feeling of you know, put up or shut up time. I gotta, you know, I gotta get it done now. And, and there's a real sense of urgency there. I don't know how many different ways I can say it. I mean, it's, but that's very excited about that. Yes. Um, 
Yeah, very excited. Very excited. Uh, you know, some of the real great personnel that we've we've brought in. Um, we talked about Pep Hamilton and uh, Greg Fry, another another really shining star. I really feel the same way about Matt Dudek. You know, a guy that's really achieved and done it uh, in this type of job. Um, amazing gift of personality and uh, people skills. Uh, enthusiasm and energy that's that's really what uh, been looking for so much Tom Gamble's the same way we got to infuse energy into uh, into our program and, and and guys that are hungry to make us better that's uh, also been a consistent theme of what what I've been looking for uh, in new hires and, and, and new people coming on to our, our ball club and um, and also in, in those jobs and we're consolidating and doing multiple guys are doing multiple uh, tasks. And, uh, Sean McGee's another. You know, he's, he's really stepped into that role of you know, managing the administrative side of things and doing a phenomenal job. So yeah, I'm excited about this. I'm excited about our leaner team. I'm excited about uh, uh, our ball team. From the staff side, the coach side, the, uh, the player side. Are those two guys going to work with Sean, Jim, mainly? Yeah. Personnel department, whatever umbrella that falls into. Yeah, yeah. The, and 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 again, Sean uh, is a very good example of somebody that's. Um, you know, we say, okay, now we're going to do, do you're going to do dual tasks. Mm-hmm. We're going to consolidate. You know, we're not hiring back a position, and you know, uh, you know, the colonel um, moving back to the uh, to the military. You know, Putting all those duties on Sean, and uh, you know, it's, it's it was growing so much that you know, got to keep this in the in the realm of being humanly possible. So uh, you know, enter Matt Dudek, uh, Tom Gamble, uh, you know, two really two really great ones. So uh, you know, and it's replacing some of the other uh, personnel. Bam Richards, who you know is a high school head coach now, and uh, Tony Tuiati that left. Uh, we had uh, had some movement in that direction, so um, some we replaced, some we haven't. But as I said, very excited about the people we have uh, on our ball club. Yeah. Phenomenal experience being at the the commissioning of the USS Gerald R. Ford, Ford class carrier. Uh, aircraft carrier. First of all, just the pride in, that you have in your, in our country, in our military, uh, and then the pride you have as a Michigan alumnus, uh, you know, and Gerald R. Ford and the things that he accomplished. And, uh, and, you know, it's the same school that he did. Uh, he was a football captain. I was a football captain. You know, he's, he was on the football team. They won two national championships. Uh, you know, he fought. Uh, he was a Na- he was in the navy. He fought in battles. I mean, real ones. Uh, he comes from one of the finest, from the greatest generation of uh, of our time, and uh, on to be a congressman and a, a dad and a grandfather and a uh, president of the United States of America. So uh, all those things were to see the ceremony, to see the tradition, to see the history. Uh, that was. Uh, Phenomenal experience to be a part of. Yeah, yeah, he's uh, he's definitely he's definitely uh, I think getting there. You know, it's improving, it's improving. So uh, he's working really hard at it, and uh, and so of uh, so of, you know, the rest of the guys. Um, we'll uh, we'll see exactly where we are at the end of this week. Uh, I want to have a bit of a mini combine because uh, there's some, still some decisions are made of who's going to be in the 105 and, and who's the healthiest, best players that we have to, to take on that to camp, you know, to, be in the, to be in the 105. There's a few of the freshmen that we're going to, well, mostly all of them, uh, are going to start on the 31st, going to stay in another week of summer school. So their their footing is really going to be is going to be really strong. So 
there's 16 guys that aren't aren't starting right in the 105 on the first day. So there's other that opens it up to to uh, you know 16 other guys, or 10 other guys to you know, see who those best are. And we'll make those decisions at the end of the week. You mentioned that back this earlier on uh, mistakes you made last season. Todd asked you a question about it. Yeah. I'm curious when you look back at the Ohio State Michigan game, how you look back on your sideline penalty to put them on the doorstep instead of that touchdown. You guys have dominated that game and had so much momentum. Yeah, I think the biggest one for me is uh, you know throwing the ball off of our goal line. You know, not getting that blitz picked up and you know, kick myself for making that call. But, uh, there you go. You want an example? There you go. I mean, I think about them all the time and. Uh, and try to uh, well, try not to repeat those mistakes. Try not to be an error repeater. You mentioned Chris Evans before as one of the running backs, the rest of the running back crew. I mean, it seems like you've got you've got a number of guys you can go to if need be. What what is it about? I guess about them. Anybody else really kind of standing out to you? Yeah, Karan Higgins had a heck of a heck of an off season. Uh, it looks like he's in phenomenal shape. Uh, Ty Isaac has worked his way into it. He got a little bit heavy. You know, we asked him to, you know, trim down. Fat is the enemy of speed. Uh, it shows up a lot for running backs. So, uh, you know, he's he's putting in the effort, and uh, he's a very talented guy as well. And I think those three are the, you know, the three mainstays. And uh, you know, we'll see what the the two freshmen can do. We'll see what Kareem Walker can do. Uh, see what Jarek Char can do. There's a guy. Uh, just walked onto the team as a student. He wasn't even recruited. He was already here at Michigan and he came to the came to the tryout. And, uh, you know, he's a guy that's made the team. And uh, True Wilson also uh, good. So uh, I think those those three, as I look at it, that uh, you know, are, are going to be there in the rotation. You know, they continue to play well and, and stay healthy. And then who else from that? You know, that next line of guys is going to jump up there and, and contribute as well. Push that round.